Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, here we are back to our preamps. And we had a little diversion there with the A12 build, but that turned out awesome. And so I'm ready to jump back into working on this shootout. Now, one of the things that after I got this one built, the Skunky Designs clone of the Conrad Johnson preamp, we've got, this is supposed to be a clone of a Marant 7. And then here's one that I think is going to be really fun. This has got just two 6S and 7s with a tube rectifier. I've got some tubes coming from Russia because some of these tubes don't have U.S. replacements like these little rectifier tubes that are in this amp. These are some China ones, but there's supposed to be some really good Russian ones available and got those on the way. Got a replacement for this guy coming. This one's already got good tubes in it. But my quandary with this whole project was what do I drive this with? And I'm not sure if people understand exactly how the volume control on an integrated amplifier works because I see people saying things that makes me believe they really don't understand. Like when I was working on the A12 project and it was showing everybody how much distortion it had, somebody said in the comments, oh, you're feeding it with too hot an input. If you if you put too high, if the input's too hot or you put a preamp in front of it that's got too hot an input that that's going to make it distort. Not happening. That is not how the volume control works on a integrated tube amp. All the integrated tube amp volume control does is a passive device that goes between the input jack and the grid of the first tube. The amplification in the game is preset by how the amplifier is built and that all you're doing as you turn the volume control is you're regulating how much of the input signal goes to the grid and how much of it is shorted to ground. Having said that, I do think that how much you short to ground of that signal and then overdriving the front end won't create distortion, but it could possibly change the way the amp sounds. And that's something that I want to experiment with, but to really get a sense of what these preamps sound like and how they perform, I need an amp that requires a preamp to drive it. Now, years ago, they used to make power amps that had the no volume knob on them, just a brick with speaker jacks on it, RCA jacks, and a power cord. And I don't own anything like that. And so I was talking to my internet pen pal, FLA Charlie on Audio Karma, and he was showing me this little amp that he built. It's called a spud amp. And I'm not sure why they call it a spud, but anyway, um, it's got two output tubes, a power transformer, and the output transformer. That's it. There's no volume knob on it. There's no driver tubes. And it requires the signal from a preamp to drive it. And I thought, what better way to test a preamp than to have an amp with no driver tubes so we don't have them flavoring the sound and some 6BQ5 output tubes, which are everybody says are just like great sounding tubes. I think that's going to be kind of a side project to this shootout is to build this little spud amp. I've got the parts on the way, not real expensive. I found these musical power supply output transformers on eBay, 30 bucks each for 10 watt, and they have a 5 or 7K tapped primary. So they'll work perfect for these tubes. They don't have an ultralinear tap, but this amp that I'm going to be building be the first one, too, that I built just as a straight-up pentode amp. So that'll be fun. It's got a 
really unique local feedback that's, I don't guess you'd call it global, but it comes off of the speaker jacks. So it is kind of like global feedback, but it's because there's no driver tube. It goes into the cathode of the output tube. Anyway, here's what the schematic looks like. And I know this sounds good because I trust my buddy Charlie and he said this thing sounds really sweet. And so I think too that this amp is so simple and the fab work's going to be really simple. The hardest thing is going to be putting the IEC connector on the back of it. And then there's the two tube socket holes, which I don't think investing in one size punch is a huge investment if you're going to want to get into this DIY stuff. You don't have to mount the volume control because there's not one. Power switch can just be a just a flip on and off deal, which is probably what we're going to use. It's going to be in a 6 by 10 by 2 Hammond chassis. I'm getting a steel powder coated one. And... I'm getting one that's big enough so it's not a struggle to wire it up. I realize on hindsight that 6BM8 build was probably more advanced than I let on. Because it was in such a compact, tiny chassis and there was so much going on inside a little, you know, 5x9 little tiny thing. So I got an inch bigger chassis in every direction and... I think this is going to be a perfect first two project for people. And then you can either buy one of these. I think this one was $100. This one was a little more expensive. I'm not sure exactly what this cost. These are like $250 pre-built. And they don't look quite like this, but this style and um, the Zero Zone makes. And there's solid state ones you could use too because you've got two outputs and so get a lot of choices here on things to try and what i think's really fun and i may start building my amps more this way if you are driving it with a preamp you can basically leave the first stage out of the power amp and then you can try different front ends for your amplifier using the preamp is the front end. And so you can try this, you can try this, you can try this, and you still got the same output tubes. And so you really are just testing what this sounds like versus this versus this. Where I'm afraid that if I try to use, you know, one of the integrated amps I have, you're going to have like a driver tube driving a driver tube and the, just the coloration of that possibly get into some Miller capacitance issues with frequency response and you know the simpler we can keep this the better and so that's where we're headed guys and I'm excited I think this is going to be fun you know I know I always say that because I'm, I'm, I'm always excited I love this tube amplifier stuff and I love showing you guys and trying to help you all learn about this stuff so anyway we are waiting on the parts when they get here going to dive into that and I hope this is going to be, and I always say this, I hope this is going to be a fairly short build series and I can do it fairly step by step, but not be 20 videos like some of these other ones have been. I'm hoping I can condense it down into six or eight at the most and you guys can still get a really good you know, feel for what it's going to take to build this thing. I've already seen people, you know, getting excited in the comments of seeing something this simple to build. It's like, oh my God, this is going to be my first build. So uh, that's fun to see too. So anyway, just wanted to give you a little update. And again, I hope the guy who sent me these two preamps is patient. So far they have been. They haven't been bugging me. You know, when are you going to get back on the preamps? And I promise you, you're going to get back some fun things once I get done with all of this. So anyway, hope you're enjoying the series. If you are, please sub the channel, please like the video, and we'll see you soon for more pre-amplifier fun. 
Have a great day.